We start with the front side of the screen, where on the left side, we can see a parameter of the hotkeys that can be used conveniently, reach some important settings. With the patient type button here, on the left side of the defibrillator, we can switch the patient mode between adult and pediatric. This changes the alarm limits for vital signs and the energy settings for defibrillation. The ECG lead select button lets the user choose the lead of the ECG waveform on the screen. So as you can see, you choose your display lead without going deep inside the setting menu simply by pressing a button. If you have a three lead ECG cable, you can choose among lead one, two, and three. With the ECG size button here, you can select the amplitude of the ECG waveform. You can select the ECG waveform size from 5 to 40 per millivolt. And lastly, here on the left side, you can press the print button for a continuous printout of the primary ECG and other selected waves with events, annotations, and measurements. Let's now switch over to the right side of the monitor with the main function buttons of the defibrillator. Mode selection now selects four modes of operation, the AED mode, the manual mode, the monitor mode, and the pacing mode. Just turn it to the desired mode of operation you want to use. For example, by turning the knob to AED mode, you are given step-by-step -step audio and visual guides. As we don't have the pads connected here, we are staying with the audio prompts to check the pads connection, but here in the right side of the window, you can see some information as the energy escalation steps, energy level, the contact indicator, and the expire time. Next one is manual mode. By turning the knob, now we enter the manual mode. You can see the select energy, the number of previously given shocks, the contact indicator, and the expire time. So let's just try it out. I can increase the energy level by pressing here plus or minus on the paddles on the device. If I select the correct energy, here I simply choose the 40 joule and I can charge either by pressing the orange button here on the paddles or again at the front of the device. I have now charged to 40 joule, but as, as I decided not to deliver the shock, I can disarm the defibrillator with the soft key indicator here on the screen. When in the manual mode, I can switch also between sync mode and non-synchronized mode by the sync button on the screen. Let's now move to the monitor mode. If SpO2 is selected, you can see the following of displays ECG waveform, the SpO2 waveform, and the respiration. On the right side of the, there are numbers of values for heart rate, the SpO2 value, and the respiration rate. If you like to change the alarm settings, you have two options. You can choose the soft key for alarm setup and go through the menus, or as I do here, you can simply move the jog dial to the parameter you want to choose. For example, the number of value of the respiration here. Enter the menu by pressing the jog dial. Simply navigate through the menu 
by the jog dial and confirm the pressing. We leave the menu by pressing home button. The final mode we have is the pacing mode. Pacing is administered through the pads. For the settings, you press the soft key for pacing setup. And it's the, in, the, in this menu, you can select either fixed or demand mode, the pacing rate and the pacing current. After you have completed the selection, you would press resume pacing to start the pacing with the selected settings. The last thing I want to show you is the menu for changing the configuration for the defibrillator. You can enter this menu in all modes. The configuration menu, you also navigate via the jog dial. You simply select what you want to change and press the jog dial. For example, here is select display. And if I want to change the color filter, I can select the gray skill simply like this. Gray skill can give users better visibility when using the device outdoors. In other menus, I can register a new patient, change the sound settings or review events data. The structure of the menu should be quite intuitive so you can easily navigate through the menus and see the options for the settings that you have. I hope this short demonstration has been enough to give you a first overview of our new D100 defibrillator monitor. And with this, we can move to the next segment and open up the floor to questions from the audience. So if you have questions you'd like to have answered, please just use your microphone to ask us. Thank you.